Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie. And let's get started. Okay, so I'm taking three of these tall jars and one shorter jar. So my three tall jars are from stuffed garlic olives and the small jar is from minced garlic. So yes, we love our garlic, but you can use whatever jars you like. And I'm also taking some of these little dishes from the Dollar Tree. They come three or four in a pack. I don't remember how many. And I'm also using some of this fix all from the Dollar Tree and some hot glue. But later on, I do end up using E6000 because I, at the time I couldn't find my E6000. But this fix all worked okay. So I'm putting out some fix all on the bottom of these, these dishes and some hot glue as well. That way it can hold immediately. And I'll place this on one of the jars. And I do the same thing to all three of my tall jars. And now I'm going to adhere the smaller jar into one of my tall jars. So I'll do the same thing. I'll add both glues and I'll just set it inside the jar. The small jar and the large jar, the bigger jar. And then my last dish that goes on the top. And I don't show it here, but later on I do end up adding the other dish to the bottom of the jar. Okay, so now that my jars are all assembled, I'm ready to start painting. So see, this is what they look like. So I have one that's really tall, one that's mid-size, and one that's shorter. So now I'm going to take some of these uh, cute little mini pearls that come in a strand. And I got these from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to place them at the joints where the dish meets the jar. So I'll do this. And also where the jar, where the two jars meet together on this tall one. So you'll see. And I had a problem with this thing rolling around on me. <laughs> but in the end, I won. <laughs> So I'm going to continue to just place these little half pearls um, where all the joints are. And now that I'm done, I'm going to set them aside and mix up some chalk paint with a little bit of baking soda. And I like this mixture. I like it for a good texture on ceramic and glass. And it works really well for me. So I just mix it up real quick with, with the end of a paintbrush until I get it till I like it. And so now all I have to do is start painting. And I don't film all the painting because we all know how to paint. Just take a brush and start painting. Just like this. Trying to finish up the painting. And look at this cute little paintbrush. So this is actually a makeup brush. But let me tell you, it makes a great paintbrush. Taking some of these shower rings from the Dollar Tree. I'm only going to use two. I'm going to make sure that they're nice and closed. And I'm going to flip these jars upside down. And do the same gluing process to the bottoms of two of the jars. And, I'm, and for these, I'm only going to use the hot glue. I don't use any Fix-All or E6000 or anything. And this works pretty good for the plastic. And I also add hot glue to the inside to help secure it a little bit more. And so you'll see here where I'm just going around the inside and adding more glue. And I'll do that to both of these. So I'll just spin it around and keep painting. And once that's painted, now I take my last two little dishes and add some E6000. I found it! I found my E6000! And some hot glue and I'll place it on the last two jars on the bottom. Place my camera at a different angle so you can see better. And I'm taking some of the antique wax from Waverly and I'm going to put some on this little dabber brush from the Dollar Tree and just add just a very little tiny little bit because I just want to place tiny little bits of it on my candle holders just to stress it a little bit. So I'll put some where the little pearls are on the joints and a little bit on the sides of all of these jars, dishes, which are now have become candle holders. And so I'll just keep turning it around with my little placemat and I'll just keep working. So I just keep painting, keep blending until I get it like I like it. DIY number one, I'm taking three of these Crafter Square wood rounds from the Dollar Tree and one of these little candle holders from the thrift store, some wood beads, and a wooden skewer. 
and I'm also taking some of the wood filler to fill in the holes of these wood rounds where the jute twine used to hang on it. A quick trick to get this hole filled up quickly is to put your finger on the other side of the hole so it won't come out and then just press in your wood filler. So I did this to all three and now I'm taking some of this 100 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand off any excess and also get the wood rounds nice and smooth because oftentimes these wood rounds are a little bit rough. So here they are all nice and smooth ready to be painted. But first I gotta get my beads ready and so what I'm going to do is take one of these bamboo skewers and some of this Elmer's wood glue and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the skewer and I'm going to place a large bead and I get these from Amazon and also a small bead and I'll do this for three different groupings like this and so they'll dry in this manner and once they're all dry and secure I'm taking my EMT shears and I'm going to just snip off all the excess skewer on there I don't need the excess skewer I just need the little beads to be together and the best way that I saw to do this is to get them together with a little skewer and so you can either cut your skewer ahead of time and place them or do like I did and just do them all at once but then you do have to trim them down with your sh with your shears okay so now they're, they're all ready to go so now I'm going to adhere these beads to the bottom of one of my wood rounds and so I'll add a little dab of this wood glue and you could do the wood glue and the hot glue but I'm willing to wait and so I just went ahead and just did the wood glue and this wood glue is pretty good so it, it worked but yeah you have the choice of doing the wood glue and the hot glue I just felt like there wasn't enough space to put both glues without mixing them together so I just wait till they get a little bit set and then set them aside so they can fully dry and so now I'm taking my little candle holder that I got from the thrift store was like 50 cents and I'm adding this time I'm adding the wood glue and I'm adding the hot glue because this is a bigger piece the other the little beads were real light so here I'm just going to adhere it to the bottom of this one this round and then the third round I'm going to leave it as is so now I'm going to go in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and paint them all white completely both sides and now I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color elephant and with my little chippy brush from the Dollar Tree, it's called a chunky brush, but it's a chippy brush. And I'm just going to dab some on my paper towel, and I'm just gonna, going to go in and distress this as much as I like. And you don't have to do this. If you want to just clear white or just plain white, you can leave it white. Or you can distress it more, or you can distress it less, whatever your preference is. But here's how I liked it, and so I went ahead and distressed it all the way around, top, side, bottom, all of it. DIY number two, I'm taking one of these cute little wooden trays from the Dollar Tree and I'm also going to use some more wooden beads from Amazon and I'm going to use another wooden skewer. So what I'm going to do is begin with my wooden beads and I'll do the same thing that I did earlier for my first project and I'll add some wood glue and I'll place these wood beads on here and I'll do a set of four this time. Last time I did a set of three this time I'll do a set of four until I get them looking like this. So now I just set them aside so they'll dry. And once they're dry, I'll do the same thing and get my EMT shears and just snip off all the skewers. And you don't see it, but these little pieces of skewers are just flying all over the room. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'll find them later. So here they are, ready to be glued. And so I'll turn my little tray over. And this time I didn't want to wait too long. So I'm going to go ahead and try and do the wood glue and the hot glue together. So it's a little tricky because there's not much space, but I'm going to go for it this time, especially with the fact that the small bead is going to be attached to the bottom of the tray. And so I want to make sure it's nice and secured on there and not falling off. And look at that, it's looking cute. So I'm, now I'm going to go in with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color white. And it's looking nice. And now I'm going to go in with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color steel. 
And with the same little chunky chip, chippy brush that I used earlier, I'm going to just go ahead and distress this piece until I get it like I like it, like this. And I'll distress the whole piece inside, outside, all of it. For DIY number three and my last DIY of this video, I am taking two more of these wooden trays from the Crafter Square section of the Dollar Tree and, an, and one of these little wooden, like a picture frame also from the Dollar Tree and also the other candle holder that I had and one of these wreath charms from the Dollar Tree and they are made of MDF and also some of these cubes from the Dollar Tree and another skewer with some beads and I already strung those on there. So now I'm going to begin with taking my two trays and adding some wood glue and I'll add wood glue on one side and I'll go in with the hot glue on the perimeter of that area and I'm going to place them together and clamp them with my Dollar Tree little clamps. These are very handy. So I'll set that aside so it'll dry. And now I'll take my little frame, a little wooden frame, and I'm going to dismantle it, which is pretty easy. It did have two little pins, so I took my metal scraper to flatten them down. And also I'm going to remove this bottom piece as well. I'm going to go ahead and utilize it. And for this piece, I needed to take my utility knife and score both sides till I get it weak enough that I can just pop it off like this. So now I'm going to begin to assemble my little base. So I'm going to take some wood glue and add it to the bottom of this base and also some hot glue. I'll do the combination of the two and I'll place it on top of the little frame part of this wood round. Use some more clips to help hold them together. And now I'll take this piece and sand it a little bit, get any gunk that's on there. And I'll show you guys another way to fill in these holes. You can take your rubber spatula or silicone spatula and hold it on the other side of the hole and fill it with hot glue. You can do that. Let that set and look, it's nice and filled. So you could do that too. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and attach this little candle holder with some wood glue and some hot glue. And I'll just place it on the bottom of this round. Once that sets, and now I'll take this piece and remove the clamps, and now I'll glue this bottom piece with some Elmer's glue, the wood glue, and some hot glue, and I'll add it to the top of this this uh, wreath charm. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. So now I have this little stacked little piece. So now I'm taking the clamps off my trays. They're nice and dry and ready. And now I'm taking this little cubes and I'm going to use just the just the wood glue and I'm going to stack them in threes. And once I stack those in threes, and then I'll add some of the wood glue on the corners, outside corners of these trays, and I'm just going to add them on there. And I'm not going to use any hot glue. And I'll do that to all four corners. And once those are nice and adhered, and now I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess skewers. But this time I'm going to leave a little bit on the very bottom of each of these because I want the I want this riser to have a different look. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a longer piece, but I do trim that down even even more to maybe like an eighth of an inch or so. And so once I get those trimmed down, I'm gonna I'm going to sand it so it won't be any though there won't be any like pokey pokey pieces. So it'll be nice and smooth. So now once I get those all done, now it's time to adhere them. And so I'm going to do the same thing, go in with some wood glue, and I'll attach them to the little cubes, the little stack of cubes. And I'll do this to all four corners, just like this. Allow time to dry. And once it's dry, then I'll go in with some chalk paint in the color white, and I'll paint everything with this white, like this. And once it's all painted, this time I'm going to distress 
with some of the Waverly Antique Wax. And I'll use the same little chunky chip brush that I used in the other projects. And I'll just start distressing both pieces until I get it the way I want it. Until it looks like this. For DIY number one, we're going to take these two crates from the Dollar Tree and one of their very sharp utility knives from the tool bench section. And so you're just going to push down and it slices pretty easily because it's just balsa wood. But since it is still wood, it might take a few tries and some strength and also score the bottom portion where the side piece connects to the base. And again, it's going to take a few tries, but just keep working at it and wiggle it and wiggle it until it finally just pops off. And once it pops off, then I'll do the second one the same. And so now I'll go in with some of the Aileen's tacky glue that I really like for my wood projects. And I've had a lot of really good results with it, so I just continue to use it for all my wood projects. And so I'll just attach them together, and I'll also go in with some hot glue to reinforce the inside portions of it. So I'll do both of the sides and the middle inside as well. So it's all nice and secure. Now just go in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and get it all painted, all the sides and the bottom. And now I'm going to take three of these arrows, these wooden arrows from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to remove all the stickers and rope. And don't throw away the rope because you can use that for another project. And I'm going to go in with some of this Minwax wood filler to fill in my holes. The smaller arrows has two holes where the rope was through it. The other two arrows, they didn't have any holes, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'll just add the wood filler and let it dry and then grab some sandpaper and sand it smooth and get it ready for painting. So let me clean up my little area real quick, get my little ladybug nearby. <laughs> and so I'm going to go in with some Waverly Antique Wax and now they're nice and painted and cute. I'm going to begin to adhere these arrows onto my box, my double little crate. And so I'm going to add couple beads of glue and put these against the back of the crates and then the center arrow the smaller arrow I don't want it to be flush with the other two so I wanted to give it a little bit of dimension so I'm going to add a couple of these tumbling tower blocks on the bottom and I'll add one more to raise it one more little um, like level or layer and so now I can add a bead of glue and add it to the back of the crates and now it's a little bit more of a dimension you can see there one is a little higher or I should say sticking out a little bit more and so now I'm going to add some more hot glue because the center one is not very stable and so now that's nice and secured and not gonna go anywhere I'm going to grab some of these craft sticks these jumbo ones and I get these from Walmart sometimes Dollar Tree has them but usually just get them from Walmart and I'm going to snip off all the rounded ends I don't need them and so these craft sticks are going to become the roof line to my little arrow houses. As you can see here, so cute. But they're, a little bit, they're still a little bit too long, so I'll trim off a little piece. And I'll use that one to guide me and let me trim off the rest. And so I'll go ahead and begin to glue all these craft sticks onto my little roofs. Or should I say roofs? <laughs> of my three little houses. So first we'll do this side, this side on the left. And then we'll do the next side to this one until it forms a little roof, a little peak. And look how cute it's looking. Oh my goodness, so cute. And I'll go ahead and do it to the other two. And so now, now that they're all have now that they all have the little roofs, now we're going to get some floral foam and I'll add a small piece in the center and a couple of thicker pieces on the sides. And I do end up adding a smaller piece behind the center house. I don't film it, I did it later on but it, is, it will be useful, so I do add a smaller piece on the back of the center little house. And so you'll see why in a little bit, why. And once all my floral foam is nice and adhered, I'm going to go in with some Waverly paint, chalk paint in the color plaster. And I should have done this before, but I'm just, I'm just now distressing my little houses. And I don't know why I didn't do it earlier, 
But you don't see right here where I make a big mess. Look at this. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not good. But don't worry. I'll fix it. Let me show you what you do when you do, if you ever make a mess like this. So rule number one, do all your distressing before you put all your projects together. That's rule number one. And I don't know why I didn't think of it. I don't know what my, where my brain was. But I went in with some more of the antique wax. And then I went in with my little sandpaper. And I worked it and worked it until I finally got it to where I liked it. <laughs> and also, my little double crate box. I forgot to distress that as well. Yes, I had a lot of distractions that day. But yeah, I don't want to make excuses. One of my sons used to always say when he was a teenager, Don't make excuses, make improvements. And I thought, oh my goodness, you are just too wise, boy. Too wise. So instead of making excuses, I'm going to make improvements and distress all my crate. And using my Cricut, I cut out this home sweet home. And it was in the design space. So you can get it from the design space. And it's this really cute little saying. It just says home sweet home. And I'm going to add it to the center little house. Because the center of our house is a home sweet home. And so here, I'm just... Take the transfer tape off and it's looking cute helps hide the mess up too <laughs> okay so now i'm going to go in with some of my florals and i've got a variety of florals some from the dollar tree and some from walmart and i actually arranged these flowers off camera and so now i'm taking one of these windmills from the dollar tree and i tried a variety of ways to remove this thing but the only way that worked for me was by moving this back and forth so I just moved it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it finally let go. <laughs> and you can see here, oh my goodness, finally one side let go and then a little twisting motion and then the other side finally let go. And now I need something to make the windmill a little higher. So I'm going to utilize some trash and these are the ends of my florals, the pieces that we cut off and we throw away. Well, I decided, hey, why don't I just wrap the ends around the base of this of this um, windmill and then that way I can just poke these bottoms onto the back and hold it up a little higher so I decide to just try that and let's see if it works so I poke it in and then look it worked <laughs> it totally worked and now I'll utilize the welcome piece that's also metal and I'll just hot glue that to my double crates in the front and be careful, this part is going to be hot when you add the hot glue to metal, so be careful. But look, she is done. What do you guys think? DIY number two, I'm taking one pack of these crafter square wood planks in the rectangular shape and they measure approximately seven by three and two furring strips that you can pick up at any home improvement store. And I'm going to go in with some Waverly antique wax and get them all painted. And now I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And with my chippy brush, I'm just going to quickly give it a little dry brush until they all have that little bit of an aged look. And I'm taking my two furring strips and spreading them and placing my planks on it, kind of like a, in a ladder formation. Try to evenly spread them out. And once I have, the, have them where I want them, then I'll go ahead and hot glue them all in place. And hot glue is sufficient because these are pretty light. So now that it's all assembled and glued down and secure, I'm going to go in with some of these decals that I created with my Cricut. And look how cute, oh my goodness. This is just such a cute decor for our kitchen. And just place them on there once you have them all placed then I'm going to take this little piece from another project and I'll put it in the cards here if you're interested in seeing that project it's just an extra piece and I'm taking some of these tumbling tower blocks and hot gluing them kind of like standing on their sides and I'm just using three 
And then this whole little setup, I'll go ahead and hot glue this to the very back of my sign. And so this will form a little bit of a pocket so I can place some florals. And so what's really cool about this is you can place whatever florals you'd like for whatever season or holiday. And for now, I'm just choosing some boxwood from Walmart. And I'm just adding these little picks in here. And I didn't show it, but I did add Mod Podge to the whole sign. So I'm all done. Look how cute. Budget friendly, beautiful. What do you guys For DIY number three, I'm taking this cute little sign from the thrift store. It has a little sawtooth hanger, and I actually got a half price. And then this little piece of wood that was in our storage room, this wire rack from the Dollar Tree, and some tumbling tar blocks, a chalkboard from the Dollar Tree, and a little palette from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to go in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and paint everything. And now I'm just going to take some of the Waverly Antique Wax and I just want to give it a really light brushing like I did with my first project. So just real lightly with my chippy brush, just brush it. Give it a little bit of definition, a little bit of depth. And I'll do this to both of them. And now I'm going to hot glue these two pieces together and this will be just fine because the pieces are pretty light. And so now I'm going to take this little palette and I'm going to hot glue two tumbling tar blocks on the bottom, but I'm going to double them. So you'll see here that it'll be four total on the bottom. And then I'll add two on each side. And this will form a cute little pocket that, that will go on the top corner of my little message center. And so this little pocket will hold mail or notes or coupons or recipes or what have you. So I'm just going to add two here, two there, and now I'll just add some hot glue. And again, hot glue is sufficient because whatever I put in this little pocket, it's not going to be heavy. It's just going to be, you know, some kind of paper. And my little chalkboard will go on the right side. And, and again, I'll just add some hot glue and adhere that that way. And I'm taking some of these craft sticks, these jumbo ones from Walmart, and I'm going to cut the rounded parts off of two and I'll leave two with the rounded parts. And I'll save those rounded parts and I'll actually use them in my next DIY. So you'll see them in a minute. Okay, so now I'm taking these four jumbo craft sticks and I'm going to go in with some of the Waverly Antique Wax. And just like this, they're nice and ready and dry. And so now I'm just going to add a bit of hot glue on the top of the chalkboard and add one of the ones with the rounded ends and the same with the bottom. Add one of them with the round, rounded ends and then add a bead of glue on the side and add one with the cut end and the same on the other side. And now my little chalkboard is nicely framed, looking really cute. And I don't show it, but I did do a little bit of a dry brush with some of the plaster paint. And here I used my Cricut to cut out this little vinyl out of the Cricut design space. So it's available there and it just says home. And I thought that was just perfect so for a little added touch. And once I get that on there, now it's time to add my wire rack. And so this was tricky. So the best way I found was to use some E6000. And I got two of the little tumbling tower blocks. And they fit perfectly, all nestled in that little area where the screw is supposed to go. So E6000 and hot glue. And I'll, and I'll just press it in there. It fits perfectly, guys. It fits perfectly. And so now I'll add some more E6000. And some more hot glue and I'll press this onto my thin board right here so now I'll lay it flat and now I'll go in with the baby wipe to remove any excess glue because I wasn't sure where it was going to hit it at so I had added quite a bit of both glues 
So here I'm trying to add a little thumbtack in the holes so the holes won't look so empty and undone or unfinished. But I wasn't liking that either after I did that. But I left it there and instead I decided to go in with some of this beautiful ribbon, this burlap ribbon that came from Walmart. And I really like it because it's got the fringe ends on both sides. So all I did here was cover up all that metal piece on the top and I just wrapped this around the board. And I don't show it but I did hot glue the two sides to the back. So here they're hot glued and here I'm just adding an extra glue in the center and I'm adding a couple little tiny sprigs of boxwood just to give it that little bit of cuteness that we all love. And I am done! I am loving this cute little message center. So cute! What do you guys number four I'm taking one of these wooden rectangular plaques from the Dollar Tree with the scallop edges and also two of the bamboo utensils from the Dollar Tree so I got a spoon and I got a turner and so I'm going to go in with the Waverly antique wax and I'm going to use a baby wipe to get a little bit of the wax and evenly spread it out throughout the plaque and the two bamboo utensils. Once those are done, then I'll go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster. And again, with my chippy brush, I'm just gonna go in real lightly, do a light brushing, get it a little bit distressed. And I'll just do the little plaque because I feel like that's probably enough for this particular project. But if you replicate this, you can always distress the spoons as well. But I just chose to do the plaque. So once that's done, then I'm ready for assembling and I'm going to use some E6000 and so I'll add some E6000 first and some hot glue and place the two utensils together in a crisscross manner. Let that set up a little bit and in the meantime, I'm taking my little plaque that's nice and dry and I'm going to go in with some of these, these stickers from the Dollar Tree, these letter stickers. And these are the big ones that you find in the stationary section of the Dollar Tree. And here I'm placing my letters, but as you can see, they're a little bit too close. But thankfully, these letters are repositionable. So that's a great thing. So here I'm playing around. Okay, move the C over. <laughs> okay, move the O over. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's just a process. So here I'm having it looking pretty cute. And I do end up adding the Mod Podge on the top to seal it all up at the end. So no worries about that. But it's looking cute. And so now I can proceed with my utensils. And so I'll go ahead and add some more E6000. Add some more hot glue. And place my little plaque in the center where the top scallop is in the center of the two utensils. If that makes sense. And now I'm going to add some of these really cute rub-on transfers. Oh my goodness, I love these eucalyptus ones. And so I'll choose four that I like. And I'll cut them out real quick. And so now I'll kind of position them where I think I want them. Two on the bottom, two on the top. And I'll just place them on there. And now I'm going to add a jute twine hanger. And I'll add some hot glue. Place the hanger on one side. And here's where I use my little rounded pieces from my jumbo popsicle not popsicle craft sticks <laughs> and so here's where you'll see them and i'll just add those to help secure everything and then that way they'll stay nice and tight and nice and secure and they won't slip off just for added security and here and here's where i just go over the mod podge and here it is what do you guys think So 
DIY number five and my last DIY of the day. I'm taking two of these wooden little houses from the Dollar Tree and I removed all of those annoying <laughs> pieces. <laughs> it was a process. And I also sanded them down. And I'm also using two of these rectangular plaques and one of these arrows. This particular arrow is pretty long and I don't need the whole length of it. So I'm going to add my little houses and my little rectangular plaques to the sides to form my little toolbox and I want to see how much of the arrow I'm going to need. So I'm just going to take a sharpie to mark off where I'm going to have to score it to cut it. And so that's how I'm going to cut it and it's pretty thin balsa wood so it'll cut pretty easily with, the, with some good effort. And so you just score it until it just pops off. <laughs> And so I'm not going to use the little arrow part, put that away. Now just go in with some sandpaper to smooth enough any rough edges. And you're probably wondering how come I just I didn't use one another one of those little planks. It's because the arrow is a little bit longer and wider. So this will help make my toolbox shape a little bit better. And so here I'm taking this wooden dowel from the Dollar Tree and my miter shears and cutting it to size. And I'm going to go in with my Waverly Antique Wax and cover everything with this wax, like this. So now once everything is nice and dry, I created this little vinyl with my Cricut. And this one thing about the Antique Wax, you have to make sure it's nice and dry before you add any vinyl. Or you might have issues. And so you see here, it's giving me a little bit of issues, but that's okay. I'm patient. And just like that, it's... It's on there, beautiful. And again, I don't show it, but I did go in with Mod Podge at the end. And so here I'm using the arrow part as my base, and I'm going to do the same process as I did with my boxes earlier. Add some wood glue, add a few beads of hot glue, and place it on there. And add some hot glue on the inside to help reinforce it. And I'll do the same thing to the opposite side, some wood glue and a few beads of, or a couple dabs of hot glue. And then reinforce the inside. And now I'm ready for my little houses to go on the ends. And I'll do the same thing. This one, well this time I did hot glue first. Should have done the wood glue first, but that's okay. It still works out because I work fast. <laughs> So now here, wood glue and hot glue. And so I place that on there. And now I just, all I have to do is reinforce all the sides, all the corners. So I'll add some hot glue. And this is not going to be a functioning toolbox for tools. This is just going to be in the kitchen for some handy snacks. So snacks for the kiddos, for the grandkids. And here's my wooden dowel. I'm just gonna hot glue that in place. And this and this uh, Gorilla Glue hot glue is really good. So I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute how well it works. And I didn't add a 6,000 to that portion. And so now just to give give it the effect that it's going through the, the sides, I cut a couple little pieces of dowels and I just glue that to the outsides. Give it that illusion. And look at that, so cute. And look, I'm going to carry it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> what do you guys think? For DIY number two, I'm taking one of these really pretty gold charger plates and I'm going to remove the sticker and I'm going to go in with some Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster and I'm going to paint the whole thing, let it dry, set it aside. In the meantime, I'm taking one of these welcome uh, pieces, they're like a wire, like a, like a gold bronze wire and I'm going to use my jute twine from Walmart, tie a little knot and I'm going to go watch a good movie and I'm going to go twine this up all the way around the perimeter of this wire until it looks like this look how cute so now that it's done i'm going to adhere it and secure it with a little dab of glue hold it down snip off the excess 
and now I'm going to go in with my lighter and I'm going to burn off all the fuzzies this tree twine didn't have a lot of fuzzies it's not like the Dollar Tree twine that has a lot of fuzzies but you know I love to burn the fuzzies so I had to do it so here's my charger plate nice and dry and I'm going to go in with some of this Waverly antique wax and it's made by plaid so as you guys know I'm a plaid ambassador now so all I'm going to do is take a very little tiny bit of this antique wax and I'm going to go over all of these little beaded areas just to highlight them and make them look really pretty and so I'm just going to continue until it's highlighted and I'm also going to do the little edge that's at the base of or that's in the middle of this charger plate and that's just to give a little bit more definition and I'll do a little bit more on the inside as well but not a lot just a tiny little bit just whatever's left on my brush and once I get it like I want it then I'm going to set it aside so it'll dry in the meantime I'm taking this buffalo plaid ribbon that I had it's just a, the last little bit of it and it was from the fall time at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to create a simple little bow I really like this uh, buffalo check ribbon because it's wired and it's thick and it makes a really fluffy kind of bow this really soft ribbon and it just makes a really pretty bow I think so I'm just gonna make a quick little bow and I'm going to dovetail the ends and once I get that done then I can go ahead and secure it to my little welcome wire I guess a door hanging I guess I guess it's a door hanging it's not really a wreath I guess it's four wreaths but I'm just gonna add a dab of glue and I'm just gonna adhere it on there doesn't take long and now I'll get my charger plate that should be nice and dry and I'll add a dab of glue look how cute <laughs> I'll add a dab of glue to the back and I'll add a jute twine hanger to the back and I'm done what do you guys think For DIY number three, I'm taking one of these really cute door hangers from the Dollar Tree, removing the label and removing all the paper from the front. And once I get it all removed, I'll quickly sand off any rough edges or sticky parts. And I'll go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I'll do both sides. And now I'm going to use another vinyl that I created with my Cricut. And this one says, please do not disturb. We are having our family time. And so, <laughs> When my children were growing up we and we would have family time what we called family home evening there were always always interruptions and so i always wanted to have one of these <laughs> so i'll just probably give this to one of my kids so they can use it for their little family so now i'm going to go in with some of this waverly antique wax and i'm going to go ahead and do like a real light coating on the whole piece front and back and especially the edges just to give it a a, a little bit more of a worn look because it looks a little bit too new too bright so I'll do this to the front and I'll do it to the back just to give it just a little bit more definition on all the little edges like this. And once I get done, then I'll go in with a little bit of the matte Mod Podge just to seal it all up and protect it. And now I'm going to go in with some of this new burlap trim from the Dollar Tree from Crafter Square. And this is so beautiful. I just found this just like the other day at Dollar Tree. So I knew I wanted to use it on something. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this, kind of looks like lace, but it's burlap. And so I'm going to use some for the bottom and a little bit for the top, just like this. And now I'm just going to add a little touch of greenery just to give it that little bit of extra look that we all love because we love to embellish our little signs. So a little bit of greenery that came off of the wildflowers from the Dollar Tree and a tiny little purple flower that came off some of the greenery bouquet from the Dollar Tree. And that is it. Super cute. What do you guys think? For DIY number one, I am taking one of these wood frames from the Dollar Tree. It's a shadow box and I'm going to use my heat gun to remove the label because the label is a little bit stubborn. And I'm also using the heat gun to soften up the glue to remove this back panel. 
So I just go over it a few times and then with my scraper, I'll just try to pry it open and I'll just keep working it and working it until it just pops off. And it takes a little bit of finagling, but it'll come off just like this. Okay, so I'll work on this piece later I'll get, to get rid of all that paper. And I'll go ahead and peel all this off and remove all these papers. I definitely don't need them. Okay, so now I'm going to use one of these bandanas from the Dollar Tree. I like that it's like a buffalo check style or pattern. I'm trying to figure out how much I need. And I'm going to go in with some of the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And I'm going to go ahead and just coat it really well. Just really saturate it as much as possible. The more the better on Mod Podge for fabrics. So once I place my bandana where I want it, then I'll go ahead and do the same to the top of the fabric. I'll saturate this as well and I'll make sure to get all the edges like this. So just really, really, really work it well and get it all nice and saturated. The more the better, especially around the edges where you're going to cut it later. Okay, I'll set that aside and now I'm going to work on the frame. And on this frame, all these little pieces of paper, what I did was I just got my little, fang my little finger sander and I just sanded off all the extra paper that's on there. And, it, and if there's any excess glue, just peel that off. Okay, so now here's my fabric, nice and dry. And once it's, when you know that it's nice and stiff and dry, then you know you did a good job with your Mod Podge. So it's easy to just cut. It cuts really easy. And you can use a, a utility knife too as well, but I just went ahead and just used the scissors since it was like really, really stiff. So once I get all of this uh, fabric cut off, Then I'll go ahead and uh, glue my frame back on and all I'm going to do is add a few dabs of glue on the corners. I was going to do it on the backing but I decided to just do the frame. So I just added four dabs of glue and I just put my backing back on and pressed it down and held it down until it's dry like this. So now here I have this little house from the Dollar General and it was $1.50. Super cute. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the label and remove this hanger piece. It's like for holding a card or something. But I really thought this little house was super cute. So all I'm going to do is with my finger sander just kind of rough up some of the edges. So when I add my antique wax later, then it'll receive it better. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And now it's just as simple as taking some hot glue and I'm going to glue this little house to the inside of my shadow box and it fits in there perfectly. Look at that. So cute. And a little bow that I had on hand and look, oh my goodness, so cute, but I need some more embellishments. So I'm going to take some of these greenery pot uh, picks. And I'm going to cut it down and add it to my frame just to embellish it a little bit. So I'm going to cut one piece in half, glue one piece of the greenery to one side of the house, and glue the other piece of the greenery to the other side of the house. And then I also have these little tiny little picks left over from another project. And so I went ahead and added that or added those to the bottom part so that way it looks really full and just like this just a little bit of glue here and there look at this so cute so now I'm going to go in with some of the Waverly antique wax and with my chippy brush I'm going to add a little bit of distressing to the frame itself and I'll do the edges and the sides and then of course I'll do a little bit on the house of course and especially where I sanded on the very sides so give it all that distressed look just so it won't look so new and total price for this everyday farmhouse DIY was about four dollars I think it's super cute what do you guys think
For DIY number two, I am taking this arch window from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to utilize this scrap piece of black foam core board that I had used for a previous project. And I'm taking my little X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut out the form of this arch window to give it a backing. And like this, just take my time and cut it, cut it all the way around until it looks like this. So now I'm going to now go back in with some more of the Mod Podge. And this is the dishwasher one again. I really like the dishwasher one when I apply fabric. Not really sure if it's, it really makes a difference, but it's my preference is what I like to do. So I just saturate this piece with the Mod Podge until I get it nice and coated. And now I'll use that same bandana that I had earlier and I'll just place that on top, another piece, and I'll just set it on there and smooth it out, kind of get it nice and nice and uh, placed. Now, when you're working with these patterns, especially with lines, you have to make sure that it's nice and straight or as straight as possible. And I don't always get it as straight as possible, but I try. <laughs> The good thing about this one here, if you don't get it perfectly straight, the arch window, the the framing of it, the pattern of it, it kind of helps disguise your little oopsies anyway. So it won't. It's it's forgiving. It's 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 a it's a pretty forgiving project. So again, I'll go in with some more of the Mod Podge, and I'll just saturate this on top, and get it really well coated until it looks like this. Set that aside so it'll dry. Again, it'll take a uh, half hour or so, maybe. So now I'm gonna go ahead and snip off all the excess. And you see on the back where it says cat. <laughs> I think we used it for some Halloween project or something. I don't remember. You know what, I think it was a game. It was a Halloween game. So anyway, <laughs> remove all this excess fabric. And I don't remove the bottom here, but I do end up removing the bottom later. So here, look, it looks great. You can't really tell that my lines are not perfect, perfect, perfect. So it's very forgiving because of the pattern on the arch window. So here, I'm going to glue it on there. And don't worry too much about the back. You won't really see it. But I do remove all the excess paper that's on the back. I just, I didn't like that it said cat. <laughs> I figured I'd just leave it white. <laughs> so here, I'm just going to add a little bit more glue to help adhere it better. Help adhere the foam to the paper. And now it's looking so cute, but I decided to, to go ahead and remove that piece in the front. And I used my heat gun to help soften the glue to remove that. I don't remove it all completely because I am going to be putting something else on top. So now I have this home sweet home little hanging piece from Dollar General. It was only a dollar. And I'm going to place this in the center of my little arch window. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hanging two twine, the little hanger, and I'm going to kind of thread it through the bottom, the underneath, and let the little beads set on top. And then I'm going to adhere this little hanger, this little piece of my hanger onto the center and also press down the little sign. So like this and let the tassel hang down. And those are like a spray, little weird tassel piece there so I just snip that off. But it's looking cute. It's looking cute. So now I'm going to use this, this eucalyptus from the Dollar Tree and I end up cutting all four but I'm going to use two. And now I'm just going to take one and kind of bend it into a kind of round circular shape. And I'm going to gather them together, the two ends, add some hot glue underneath the tassel, place them both there, and then reinforce it with a little bit more hot glue, and place my tassel down on top, press it down so it'll dry, and it'll here. And so now here I'll just kind of gather the two and the two top ends of each lip to make like a crisscross shape. 
and it pretty much stays. And I just go ahead and add a little dab of glue on top to help keep that in place as well. And now here I'm just going to take two ends off the other two. I went ahead and decided to use them and add a little dab of glue and place it on the bottom just to give it more of a greenery look. I'll add one piece on one side and one piece on the other side. Like this. And now I'm going with some of the wavery and the quick wax. Give it that little brush look. And I'm using a little sticky brush. I'll just go around the side. All these little edges. And I'll just lick it until I get it to look like this. And this everyday farmhouse DIY cost me about $4. You guessed it? Video one to see, I'm taking a little galvanized little tabletop support pieces and removing this label and having the ink gun because it was a little bit tough to remove. <laughs> Remember, use that heat gun. So now I'm going to take my little mini screwdriver set from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to remove these screws because I want to paint the base. So let's remove them one at a time. To come that off. Base, and I'm going with some of the Waverly Cup paint in the color white. And like this. Painted. And I'll put that aside and I'll work on the little galvanized piece. And I'm going to go in with some really pretty tissue paper. I really love the tissue paper. I've created quite a few DIYs with the tissue paper, mostly to decorate my craft room. But I love it. It's very fun as well. So I'm just going to take this piece that I think it off, take the rest of it for another project, and going with some of the Mod Podge this time, I'm just using the matte Mod Podge, and I'm just going to place a nice thin coat just on this particular kind of surface, you really don't want to saturate it, just, just a nice thin coat, even thin coat would be just fine. All the edges, make sure to get it all smoothed out. To the now I'm going to place my piece of tissue paper and just smooth it out with my fingers. Trying to focus on all the edges, make sure there's nothing to it. And I'll set this aside to dry. And this will take about, I don't know, about 30 minutes to dry so Once it's dry, I'm going to try to place all these little edges and push them to the back and I'll snip off all the excess tissue paper and I don't show it here but I do end up covering the whole back as well I just figured I don't want to finish this so here you see me cutting to help push everything back and I do end up adding the glue on the very back and cover the whole back piece so it looks like this and now I just need to snip off the bottom piece and I want to get it as close as possible without cutting any of the front edges. And now I'm ready to place this back onto my little base. But first I want to add one of these wood words from the Dollar Tree. They're brand new from Crafter Square. And there's several in this pack. It's really a fall pack. But there's a couple of words on there that are very farmhouse. Like blessed and farm fresh. So for this particular one, I'm going to use Blessed. And there's an extra little piece of wood where the E is, but I just popped that out. And I'm going to go in with some of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color white. And now I'm ready to start assembling my little house. So first I need to place my little house back onto the base. And I just add the two little screws on and screw back in with my little mini screwdriver. So it looks like this. So here I'm gonna add the Blessed word that I painted white. And I'm just going to place some glue and center it on the bottom and glue it down. And then also have this 
little wreath that came off one of those love wood words from the Dollar Tree. It's like a decor piece. It was on the O. And I just removed it. And here I'm adding it to my little house. And so now I'm going to take some of this farmhouse ribbon. Also from the Dollar Tree. Just a little piece. And I'm going to snip off and just create a cute little tiny bow. And I do dovetail the ends as well. Until it looks like this super cute so all I have to do now is glue it to the base of my little wreath and with some of my Waverly antique wax distress the whole piece I'll do all the edges of the little house of the blessed word and of course the base and total price for this one was about three dollars what do you guys think For DIY number four, I'm going to take one of these framed chalkboards from the Dollar Tree, remove the label, I'm going to detach the jute twine, but I will be reusing it, and I'm going to use one of these little wor words from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use the word that says farm fresh, and they're made out of wood. So I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and I'm going to paint all this up like this, and so now I'm going to replace my little jute twine back on but I'll be placing it the other way instead of the knots being on the back I'm gonna place the knots in the front so this knot will be like this and then the other knot will be in the front and I used a little bit of hot glue on the tip of the jute twine so I can thread it easily so now I'm just gonna snip off the excess and look looks more farmhouse I think super cute so now I'm gonna take one of these packs of the eucalyptus I haven't seen them in a while I did find a couple packs at a couple random stores that I never go to so they must have been left over and I thought they were back I was excited but I haven't seen them in a while but anyway I'm gonna take the little wreath part and I'm going to place it in the center of the chalkboard like this and just rub it on with my little scraper and rub 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 until it all gets transferred onto my little chalkboard and remember just take your time removing that plastic and look it's so cute so all I have to do now is just add my little wood farm fresh sign and place it in the center of the chalkboard in the center of the wreath and look at that so now I decided to utilize some of the little pieces of eucalyptus that are on this pack so I take four pieces and I'll add one on each corner of this little frame wood frame and until it looks like this and now I'll go in with some of the Waverly antique wax and with my chippy brush I'll get it all nice and distressed do all the edges do the words everything until it looks like this and this only cost me about three dollars at the most if that what do you guys think For DIY number five and my last DIY of the day, I'm just taking one of these candle holders from the Dollar Tree. They're brand new and I love this one because of that gap in the center where my finger is. And so you'll see what we do with that. So now I'm going to take one of these wood rounds, these ornament wood rounds, and I'm going to remove the jute twine. I don't need it, but I'm going to save the jute twine for another project, the little hanger piece. And so now I'm going to take my silicone spatula and place it on the back of the hole and I'm going to fill in the hole with some hot glue so I'm just going to fill it all up instead of using spackle or you can use spackle if you want or wood filler but I just decided to use hot glue because I'm going to paint it anyway you're not going to see it 
So here it is, nice and filled. And now I'm going to take some of these half wood rounds that I had, that I purchased from Amazon, and I'm going to glue these all around the perimeter of this wood round until it looks like this. And now I'm going to work on the candle holder. And so I had these beads that were strung on a cotton twine, and I'm just going to take enough to go around this middle portion and pull what I don't need and just make a knot and cut it off and secure it with a triple knot. I want to make sure that these don't come apart and remove the excess. And now I just need to hot glue the wood piece onto the top of my candle holder and paint everything white with my Waverly chalk paint. And when I say paint, I mean really paint. I mean, I got into all the nooks and crannies. If I would have filmed it all, I probably would have been an hour. <laughs> but yeah. And just like that, look, so cute. And now I just need to go in with some of the Waverly Antique Wax and to give it a good distressing. I might go a little heavy here and there, but I do go back with some of the white chalk paint. I don't show it, but I did do that. And I just keep working it, working it and working it until it looks like this. Everyday farmhouse riser for about $4. What do you guys think? For DIY number one, I purchased some of these Lazy Susan hardware from Amazon and they were $8 for four of them. So I only used one, so that cost me $2. And so this hardware is pretty cool. I'll link it in my description box. And so all I'm doing is I'm taking one of these Melamine plastic plates from the Dollar Tree and I'm taking some E6000 and placing it on the Lazy Susan hardware and some hot glue as well. And I'm just going to place this in the center of the bottom or the underside of the plate. And look, so cute. And now I'm taking one of these fancy round serving trays from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do the same process. I'll place some E6000 and some hot glue on the metal piece of this Lazy Susan hardware. And I'll place my tray on top of it and center it as best I can like this flip it over to make sure it's centered properly press it down look what do you guys think yeah one number two I'm taking one of these little wooden drawers and I'm going to paint it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I'm also taking a shadow box, but not this one. I'm using actually a longer one. And I'm going to take it apart. And I'm going to go in with some tissue paper and some Mod Podge. And so I Mod Podge the tissue paper onto the frame and one side of the inside of the drawer from the little box. And I don't have the actual footage. I don't know what happened to it, but I get to the point where it looks like this. And so now I'm going to take my little finger sander and sand off the excess tissue paper that's hanging off the side and I'll go all the way around and I'll do the same thing to the little drawer to get it looking like this and now I'm going to take one of these little wooden hearts from Valentine's Day and I'm going to remove the little sticky part add my own glue and adhere this to the top center of the backing of my frame like this 
And now with these rub-on transfers, I'm going to cut out love and forever. And I'm going to place these on the little heart. I'm going to leave the heart natural. I want a natural element to this. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this, but today's DIYs are wedding reception themed. And I'm doing this because my youngest daughter is getting married next March. And so I'm just getting a head start on little projects here and there. And whether or not she wants to use them or not, at least they'll be ready to go. So now I'm just rubbing my rub-on transfer onto my little heart. And if you've never used these rub-on transfers, all you do is remove the backing off of it and place the little sticky part onto your surface. And you rub, rub, rub until the print is on your surface and remove the little plastic covering and that's it just keep rubbing until you get it all on there super cute so now for this particular shadow box the back of it is cardboard so i'm cutting off the top part that usually folds into a box or a rectangular box and so now i'm going to make sure it's going to fit in there just right and now that i know it does i'm going to add a little bit of this burlap trim to the top part that I cut because it looks pretty raw from the back side so I'm just going to take some hot glue and adhere some of this all the way across the top like this and now I'm going to place this frame back onto the backing and if you haven't guessed it yet I'm creating one of these framed guest books for a wedding reception and so the whole idea is that the top part is open that way the guests can Take a little heart and write their name on it and drop it inside the little frame and then it becomes a little keepsake for the couple super cute and now i'm just going to secure close the back part and i'm going to also cover it with a little bit of g20 so you won't see too much glue and i'll go all the way around this frame on the back side and now i'm deciding that i don't like this hanger so i'm going to remove it and instead i'm going to replace it with some more of this burlap trim i think it's so beautiful and once I add it, it looks like this. And so here are my little hearts that I purchased off of Amazon. And look, you just drop it in there. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the little box. And for the little box, I want to add a little handle. And so I had half of one of these little wooden stems from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to glue that on there as the little pull, the drawer pull. And so now I'm going to add all my little hearts on there. I do add them a little bit more neater than this, but I just wanted to show you how they fit in there. And look, really cute, cute little set. But I wanted to gild the lily a little bit more. So I'm taking one of these little frames from Dollar General. They were only a dollar, the little chalkboard, removing the jute twine, removing the staples. And now with my Cricut, I just cut out a design space file, cut file, and it says, please sign our guest book. And now using a tumbling tower blocks, I'll just simply adhere one to the back of the frame of this little chalkboard and then i'll adhere this to the top of this box like this and i'll secure it extra with more glue and now i can place a little drawer full of the little hearts nice and neat in there so now the guests all they have to do is put a little name on it in the little frame what do you guys think For DIY number three, I'm taking 15 of these tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to go in with some Aileen's Tacky Glue. I love using the Aileen's Tacky Glue for these tumbling tower blocks because you don't see any gaps like you would with hot glue. So I'm just going to add three together and then two, one on top and one on the bottom. And I'll do this for three little sets like this. And now using the Waverly's Antique Wax, I'm going to go in with a baby wipe and stain all of these pieces top sides back all of it so i get it looking like this so now 
I'm going to add a little jute twine to the back. So I have three little pieces that I've cut out and I'm going to also utilize some little remnant pieces of craft sticks that I had. And so I'll add a little dab of glue and place my jute twine and then add the little piece of craft stick just to help secure it a little bit better. And I'll do this to all three. So once I get those done, now I'm going to go in with some more of this burlap trim that I think it's so beautiful. And I'm going to use it to help decorate these little pieces. These little pieces are going to be just little decor pieces that can be used anywhere really. You can use them anywhere on the table as part of the decor or the centerpiece or different tables or anywhere you would like a little bit of a rustic flair, a little bit of rustic touch would be super cute. So I'll just keep adding this beautiful burlap trim until I get it to looking like this. And now I'm taking some of these tiny little crafter square little bottles, little glass bottles, and I'm going to take three and I'm not going to use a little stopper. I don't need it. So I'll remove those, put them away for another project. And now with some hot glue, I'll just adhere these to the middle of these little pieces. And now just for this video purpose, I'm taking some of these mini roses, these really light yellow ones. And I'm just going to add one little flower to each of these little bottles, these little glass bottles. And that is it. And of course, you can add whatever color flower you would like, depending on your wedding decor, wedding theme. But that is it. Look how cute. You can use these as gifts as well. What do you guys think?